story that we have today. It's very interesting because again, Joseph is being roused from her dreams. It seems to be a custom of the Lord to rouse Joseph from his sleep. Joseph is aroused from his sleep. An angel says, get thee up and take thee the woman and child and get thee hence from here for, for there shall be the Herod is seeking the child's life. And so Joseph, being ever faithful, does as he is commanded. But an interesting thing, he could have gone to many places. He could have gone to many places for refuge where he would have been beyond the reach of Herod. Many places that would have been closer by. But yet he chose, it was chosen to go into Egypt. That it might be fulfilled, as it says by the, by the prophet Hosea, He shall call my son out of Egypt. Now in the Old Testament, Hosea was speaking of Israel, the child who was brought out of Egypt, the chains had been loosed, and they were brought out of Egypt and promised to go into the to the promised land, a land of, of milk and honey. And in their freedom, their shackles released, and following Moses into the desert, and yet they fell away. It would not have been just one time or twice, but several times. They fell into idolatry. They fell into to, uh, worshiping idols. They fell into offering incense to Barlam. And they fell away. They broke the covenant that the Lord had made with them. Time and time again. But yet, our God is a merciful God. And we're all working into, according to His plan for salvation. His Son, Jesus, was to be called out of Egypt. Like Israel was called out of bondage, but Jesus would be different. You see, Jesus would be perfect. Jesus would not fail as Israel did so many times. He would not fall into the same uh, tragedy that befell Israel. But he shall come forth from Egypt and working great things and great miracles in his lifetime, <coughs> showing the way to salvation. He shall be called King of Kings, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, the Great Comforter. He shall be called Great, the King of the Jews. But most importantly, dear ones, He shall be called Messiah. Messiah. He shall be He who brings salvation into the world. And so, it is that God's plan has been put in motion. The child should come out of Egypt. Let me ask you today, where are your chains today? For you have been called out of the world. You have been called to be separate from the world. You have been called to live in this world, but not to be of it. And do not allow yourself to be shackled in chains once you have retained your freedom from God Himself. Through salvation, your chains have been cast asunder. The, the, the links that were around your, your ankles that were weighing you down to this place and to this, this earthly realm have been cut off. But yet, we still entrap ourselves. We still enslave ourselves to things, do we not? The church is called to be in the world, but not of it. For surely I can tell you that the Word will tell the church you must go along with what we, have to, what we have to say. You must simply go along with the flow. Dear ones, I tell you, either these people do not know, or perhaps they do, that the church that concedes authority to the world is no longer the church. A dead fish does not swim against the current, but is washed away. A live fish is he who swims against the current. Be live fish, dear ones. Be live. 
Do not be conformed to this world because it seeks to conform you. It seeks to once again enslave you and enshackle you in those chains. Dear ones, do not become slaves. Be free. This is the most important thing. That we who have been freed in Christ must never, ever allow ourselves to be shackled into the sins and the, and the fallenness of this world again. Sure, we're going to fall along the way. We're going to sin. We're going to, to do things, as, as Paul says, I often do not do that which I should do, and often I do that which I should, should not. But we shall do the same. But this is, where, this is where the beautiful thing of the story of salvation comes in. We are given confession. We're given repentance. We're given the chance to make right what we've made wrong. We are given the chance to take those sins and lay them upon Calvary. Upon the cross. <coughs> and once you lay them down there, do not, dear ones, do not deign to pick them up again and carry them with you for they are worthless. You see, I talk to you as your priest, but I also talk to you as a fellow sinner along the way. I can tell you I speak from experience. <coughs> do not let yourself be shackled in again. For you have been called out of the land of bondage. You have been called away from the, the, the snares of Satan. As it says in the old Benedictine uh, uh, tonsuring ceremony, put away the old man and his clothes. Take off the old man and his clothes. Take these shackles off and let Christ give you a new raiment that's bright and shining as the day that you were created, as the day that you entered into baptism. Dear ones, do not allow yourselves to fall all the way. But pick yourself up. Go to confession. Go and repent. Turn around, as it says. Turn away. Be free. For you have been called out of Egypt. You have been called to be free. Not slaves. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.